I've got three kids, two son-in-laws, and did you know that I'm also a grandmother? Not just once, but twice. Have two beautiful grandchildren. Little Miss Addie, who is almost two, and Branch, who's just a few months old. Now Addie, who, you know, soon will need them. I want to reassure you, she already has a shotgun and she already has a rifle. And she's got a little pony named Sparkles, too, so the girl is set up. <laughs> wow. That's the governor of South Dakota bragging about her two-year-old granddaughter owning guns. Bold. When my kid was little, I was covering outlets, locking cabinets, and cutting grapes in half because they might be a choking hazard. <laughs> Christy Nome is like, here's a shotgun. You're on watch tonight. Six, six separate Tyrannus. <laughs> Look, I know liberals and conservatives don't agree on much, but can we agree that you should not own a gun if you don't know how to poop in a potty? <laughs> I think that's fair. That was Jordan Klepper guest hosting The Daily Show last night, talking about how South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem's two-year-old granddaughter apparently owns guns. Klepper will be hosting all this week, so you should watch. But he joins us now, so you can get him right here. here how go. are you? I'm doing very well. How, Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Are you, did you like your first day? The first day was great. Yes. yes. I wanted to do something nice and easy breezy, and we dealt with uh, <laughs> gun carnage and uh, Clarence Thomas uh, destroying the credibility of the court. Fabulous. So, a day Ex in America. Exactly. It is a day in America, Jonathan Lemire. I mean, this is unbelievable the amount of material Jordan Klepper has to work with yeah you could do a four-hour show some of us <laughs> some of us do um, I think that's an insane he choice does I don't know five. How you do it. he does five so let's talk to talk a little bit about the, about guns and obviously you bring a, a light touch to this on the show but uh, you were at the NRA convention in Indianapolis. Tell us a little bit about what that spectacle was like. Well, I was I was at the the Tulsa Gun Show uh, uh, a couple weeks before the NRA convention. We we knew we wanted to cover guns because it's always a big issue here in America. And at the the gun show, what blew my mind one is seeing the gun show loophole in in its all its glory. We show up at the parking lot and people are exchanging guns. Whoever has a lot of money in their pocket. Uh, and you start to engage with folks. And I think what we started to see a couple weeks later at the NRA convention is this culture, this culture around guns, around fear, in a way that, sadly, we talked about a little bit last night about this, this most recent shooting uh, that comes out of a place of fear. It comes yeah. out of a place of racism. But when you go to an NRA convention, when you hear people talk about what the bad guys are, it's not the guns. It's the stoking of the fears. It's the transgender community. It's the criminals in the big cities. It's, it's uh, cannabis, as Donald Trump said. Uh, and so that, that is something we wanted to talk about on the show, is the culture around guns. It's creating such a, a trigger-happy populace, and tragedies occur daily. You had AOC. You spoke with her about this. Do we have the clip of uh, the, the gun conversation? Okay, we'll jump to the next conversation you had with AOC, which was about the revelations regarding Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas not disclosing some income streams, among other things. Mm. And you talked to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez about that last night. Let's take a listen. The justice is required by law to disclose something like that, and he hasn't been. Can you empathize, though? Beyonce came through here and wanted to take you on a sweet vacation. Wouldn't you say yes and let her show you her Nazi memorabilia? You tell someone about it. But hey, hey, don't don't put Bay's name on that like that. Don't I'm not saying she has not. I'm saying if she invested in Nazi memorabilia <laughs> to show that she hates Nazi memorabilia, she'd want to show it off. And that whole thing is just, I mean, bizarre. You also don't keep the, the linens around. Which linens? The, oh, the Nazi linens? Yeah. Who does that? Don't you think if you had a billion dollars, and you bought everything, you'd probably eventually get to Nazi linens? This is the distraction the, of that whole issue. You're right. We're just focused on that, as opposed to all the money that's going over to Clarence Thompson. Yes. Although, if you're a billionaire, can't billionaires have friends? They can. Supreme Court justices are required if they are receiving money from people. They shouldn't even be receiving money from people. This is why we pay salaries to public servants. Mm -hmm. And if they want to live that kind of lifestyle, then they can resign from the court. They can retire. Pretty good, Reverend Al. <laughs> oh, Jordan, big fan of yours. And I think you said it here best, the undermining of the credibility of the court. And the way you did it with uh, your conversation interview with AOC feeds it with humor, but it's a very serious issue when you have a member of the court that's making decisions that will live for decades mm -hmm. 
uh, that couldn't be compromised, even aside from dealing with a guy who collects Nazi stuff. Oh Just God. the actual uh, uh, conflict of interest or potential conflict of interest is something that we shouldn't be poo-pooing away. No, I, it's, I mean, it's ludicrous. It's, it's, I think you guys have talked about it. It doesn't, it doesn't pass the, the laugh test. Um, and people see these stories. We already have a crisis of credibility with the court, and now it's going to a ridiculous level, to the point that even as comedians, we have a hard time yeah. heightening your buddies with Nazi memorabilia. You have statues in the back, and you're building a mother's house. I think what then scares us is this next phase. This is the accountability phase. Yeah. And I think a working government would be able to address this in a way that you can restore credibility. But what I'm starting to hear right now is we're already we're already doubting the the uh, the availability of accountability in this culture, you know, and, and that 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 is where that is where I don't know what I'm going to do with the comedy of that. Right, side. and with Clarence Thomas, add to that his wife and her text to Mark Meadows, and my God, what are we supposed to think? A potential conflicts? Potential? No, those are conflicts. Those are exposures that are not supposed to be happening for a Supreme Court justice. You also talked to Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez about how New Yorkers responded to former President Trump being indicted in their city. Here's some of that. How do you think New Yorkers treated former President Donald Trump? I think they treated him like a Florida man. He don't belong to us no more, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's not from Queens anymore. He's a citizen of Mar-a-Lago at this point. And you saw New Yorkers treating him as such? Yeah. Why wouldn't we? Do you think people were weeping when he was booked, as he claims? Um, maybe George Santos and Marjorie Taylor Greene were, but not me. Kick it back to LaGuardia, maybe. <laughs> Kick it back to LaGuardia? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is in your district? Yes, it's in my district. And so is Rikers. And so we have, I have to go in every single day watching people get treated far worse for doing far less and then you know it's like this red carpet that gets rolled out i mean if you hurt one person you get 10 years in prison but if you hurt millions of people you get your name on a building so jordan the day that the former president was arraigned here in lower manhattan those protesting against him outnumbered those who were protesting on his behalf, but he drew some bold-faced names, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, George Santos. You were down there uh, yeah. as well. I, I was. I got to get up close to George Santos. Um, oh, what was, what that, was like? that like? Tell us. Did you, you talk know, to him? I, 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 I talked at him. At him? Is uh, that you talking at him right you, now? You see me right there in the stylish Ray-Bans trying they're to they're get... Looking yes. very, very, very sharp, but Thank he you. did not respond to you? No, I was, I was trying to get down to the bottom of a few things. One, his volleyball career. I think there's a lot of lingering questions questions as to what the history is there, uh, whether or not he's going to be a college championship. You're right there. I'm right there. This is, this is what American journalism looks like, somebody with no journalistic credibility getting as close to this person as humanly possible. Yeah, so you were like on his shoulders. Yes. And no answer. And you heard he's running for re-election. Yeah. <laughs> he announced his re-election, so you still have an opportunity. I think so. He's doubling down on that fame thing. Uh, shame, it's dead in America. Just, God, it really is. It really is. But why didn't he respond to you? You were right there. I think I am a kind, lovely person. I did too. Put in the effort to be there. So, George, if you ever want to talk, I'm hosting the show this week. Let's oh. talk volleyball. Yeah, you should have him on. But come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come George. on, George. Come on. Come on, The Daily yeah, right Show. There. Make the appeal. George. I'm open. Yeah. I'm hosting The Daily Show for a couple more days. If you want to come on out, we'll talk volleyball, whatever you want to talk. We'll talk about the time you were a Supreme Court justice. Whatever yes. you want to talk about, bring it to The Daily Show. I, yeah, rich friends too. I'm telling you, this could be huge. This could be big. <laughs> Jordan Clapper, <laughs> thank you. We'll be watching regardless as to whether you get that big get. But yeah. I hope you get him. You can watch Jordan talk to Mission Governor Gretchen Whitmer and country yeah. singer Charlie Crockett at 11 p.m. Eastern tonight on Comedy Central. Congratulations for this week. That's fun. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks for being time. on. Appreciate it. Great.